Today we're going to go over why delaying until you have 20% down to purchase may not be the best idea. And I have my trusty uh, notepad here. We're going to go over this. I'm going to do this live with you because I have this conversation with a lot of clients. And let's go ahead and let's do it. So here are the two scenarios. And what we're going to do is we're going to have an initial purchase price of $1 million five hundred thousand one point five million initial purchase price here and the question is do you put ten percent down on that property now or do you wait until you have twenty percent down and most of the responses I get from potential purchasers and clients is that uh, they don't like PMI we don't want PMI private mortgage mortgage insurance which is like an added insurance policy from the mortgage lender um, that they make you pay for because you have less than twenty percent down well Sometimes you can get a 10% down loan without PMI, so you should talk to your lender or talk to your agents. But in general, if we're assuming that that's the case, we're going to add that in here and we're going to see what happens. So 1.5 million, and we're going to assume that you can't raise $150,000 to get to 20% down uh, in quicker than two years. You may be able to do it in a year if that's the case, cool, but it may also take you longer than two years. So I think two years is a pretty safe, um, uh, pretty safe estimate here just to be fair. And also I want to caveat here before we get started that this is for purchasers that have the ability to purchase now. Obviously these numbers don't work for a purchaser that can't afford what's out there right now, but I often see that purchasers who can afford choose to wait. And this is who that video is for in terms of what may or may not be the best decision for you. So let's get through it. Okay. So we've got the down payment on 1.5 million at 10% down to purchase now would be 150,000. Excuse my writing, I'm using a little stylus on the end of a pen. So this is fun, it's the first time we've done this. Uh, so PMI on that, I have my trusty little mortgage calculator here from my lender. If you want one, go ahead and email me, garrison at soldbygarrison.com and I'll send you over this mortgage calculator. You can also find it on my website, soldbygarrison.com. But if I take a 1.5 million and I go 10% purchase price, and we're gonna assume a 7% rate for payments if we get there, but let's go ahead and we have a PMI estimated of $349. So let's round up to $350. So yes, that is $350 that you should not be paying monthly. And it sucks. It makes your payment $350 more expensive. But let's go through the numbers. $350 for two years to make these two equal here. So $350 um, $350 times 12 is $4,200. So what you're paying over two years is $4,200 hundred dollars okay and for those two years if you purchase now at 10 percent down one hundred fifty thousand dollars out of your pocket for those two years you get to live in the home you own you also get the mortgage interest tax deduction and principal pay down which is a whole another video on how those work and how those benefit you obviously the government loves you to be a homeowner and you get tons of tax breaks to be a homeowner we're not even talking about depreciation and things like that but in general, mortgage interest tax deduction, principal pay down, you get that and you get to live in the home for two years. So, <clears throat> excuse me, at the end of two years, let's assume uh, a low appreciation rate. So in general, historical appreciation rates is three to 5% yearly. However, in 2020, we saw like 20% in one year. I'm not going to do the high one for you guys here because I want to show you how these numbers work in like worst case scenarios or really low estimated scenarios. So we're going to estimate just a 3% appreciation, which is the low end of what happens yearly over the history of real estate in the United States, 3% appreciation. So 3% of two years is 1.5 million uh, times 1.03 equals times 1.03. Okay, so your property value at the end of two years is 
$591,350. So your home value in the two years while you own it has gone up just at 3% of $91,000. You also pay down principal on that. But once again, that makes things very complicated. We're going to leave this the same. We're going to imagine if you didn't pay any principal down. So your equity in the property at the end of two years is the $91,350 and the $150,000 you put into it. So let's go $91,350 plus $150,000. That's $241,350. That's how much equity you have at the end of two years. 241,350. Okay. How did I get that number? I have a home value of a million five ninety one. You had put 150,000 down. So your loan amount was the difference. Your loan amount was 1,350. The difference between 1,350 and where the home value is, a million five ninety one is 241,350. All right. So now let's do the other one, which which I meet a lot of clients all the time who are in the middle of doing this, in the middle of saving to 20% down, right? So your down payment in two years is 20%. Uh, but let's imagine you're buying the same house, okay? So it's not 20% of the value today, it's 20% of the value in two years from now. So your purchase price in two years from now is your home value. You see them right next to each other there. So your purchase price is one million. Five ninety one three fifty. Either the same house or a one point five million dollar house that has just appreciated at three percent for two years. Either way, in two years you're paying three percent more twice, um, and you're paying a million five ninety one for the same house. If we assume in this scenario the same appreciation, because no matter what market you're in, whether it goes up or down in your two scenarios, the appreciation rate appreciation rate is going to be the same, right? Okay. So a million five ninety one. So out of one million five ninety one zero zero zero, or sorry, one million five ninety one three fifty, and you take that times 0 0.2 for twenty percent down. Your down payment's now three hundred eighteen thousand three one eight two seventy. So already out of pocket that 20% down costs you an extra 18,000 waiting two years at 3% appreciation, which is a very low appreciation rate. Already you can see where this money's being lost, right? So obviously your PMI when you were waiting through that time is zero. You had no PMI. You waited, you avoided PMI. Okay, so your growth yearly is the 3%. During those two years, you continued to pay rent. You didn't get any mortgage interest tax deductions. You didn't get any principal pay down this added stuff. You got nothing. And since you bought this property today, your equity is exactly what it was when you paid for it, right? So your equity is 318,270. Okay. So between the two, obviously you have more equity in the property, you put more down, but you waited two years to do that. So what you did was you paid a purchase price that is $91,000 higher and you paid a down payment that at 20% today versus 20% in two years at a 3% appreciation is $18,000 higher. And in order to do that, you avoided $4,200 of PMI. So you can look at it in this way as, you avoided $4,200 over two years, but then your home costs $91,000 more expensive. So that's that's what I'm talking about. So why is this a thing? Well, you can refinance at whatever the rate is that year. So if you purchase now and you paid your PMI for two years and then you refinance in two years, because that's how long it would take you to, in this scenario, to accumulate that extra $150,000, that extra down payment, you would only pay $4,200 in PMI and you would already have the purchase at a million five and you'd be refinancing at whatever the rates are in the future. And you're like, well, Garrison, what if rates go up? 
Well, this is the same world we live in. So the rates go up on your purchase two years from now too. So whatever the rates are today, or so whatever the rates are in two years in scenario one or scenario two, it's the same rate. So whether you're purchasing at that rate at a million five ninety one, or you're refinancing a million five at that same rate, you're still getting out of your PMI, and it, the payment is going to be very sorry. The the rate is going to be the same whether it goes up or goes down. So as you can see from this scenario, there's a lot of benefits to get into the market early, which is why we say in real estate, real estate is not about timing the market. It's about time in market. The earlier you can get in, even if you have to pay things like PMI or things like that, gives you the options moving forward to benefit from them. So you can see in this scenario, you paid way less out of pocket. You probably were able to save money over the next two years. You only paid a $4,200 premium over the two years, while in the second scenario, you were trying to save your $150,000 extra. And you got it at a lower price and your payment at the end of the day will also be lower. Thanks for joining me. I see this all the time. Uh, buying a home is a tough decision. It's a big decision. If you want to talk more about your particular numbers or you want to look into some of the purchasing scenarios in the area plan for 2024, go ahead, give me a call. You can give me a call or shoot me an email, garrison at soldbygarrison.com. You can also find my number below to give me a ring. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. And I will see you next time.